Hey everybody. <clears throat> Hi my my. Oh, we good. Okay. We still, I got to see you a little bit more, though. You need a little bit more light on you. Okay. Yes. <laughs> How you doing? I'm doing well, and yourself? I'm doing good. I'm your bad boy. I'm the host of Life Her Podcast. Yes, I, I <laughs> am aware. <laughs> <laughs> You know, gotta put a face to everything. Yes. I appreciate you being on my show. It really Thank means you. a lot to me. And it's, it's gonna mean friend. a lot to our listeners also, because you are amazing. Thank you. Thank you. I so appreciate that. <laughs> well well, first off, I would like to ask you growing up, what what did you ever feel pressured by the things of you being a perfect girl and your dad being a pastor? Um, no, I wouldn't say that I felt pressure being a perfect girl. I think that the people's opinions and perspectives became much more um, powerful, in, in, so to speak, than uh, my parents ever. They never put us in a box of you got to be this or you got to be that. And I've always been very blunt and raw, like all of my life. And so yes. I've never really <laughs> allowed people to take me out of me just being me. And I didn't come out until I felt I was ready to handle both the trolls and the triumphant things that would happen in my life. Yes, I, I bet. So it was, you basically felt like the people on the outside looking in expected a lot from you oh, yeah. more than more than your own parents <laughs> yeah oh absolutely the church people put a lot on pks we get a bad rep and so um i always felt like there there was always going to be a rumor there was always going to be something that um people just kind of wanted to feed off of um but i just uh -huh. never put myself in a position to feel like i needed to be perfect um and I think that, that is enough. the uniqueness of my ministry. Like, the uniqueness of my ministry has put me in a place where I don't have to be perfect. I bring people into my imperfections and teach them how I'm working through the process to become better. So it's been really, really great so far. That's, that's good because, you know, a lot of people put pressure on us no matter what we do. Even okay. if you're not a daughter of a pastor, bishop, or, you know, it's just, it's just life. So yeah. it's just, we have to figure out ways how to cope with it and deal with it and pray our way out of it. So we won't go into depression and stressing about people's words and what they say to us. Absolutely. Absolutely. You got to dance the people off, dance the haters off. <laughs> so, um, did, do you feel like you established your own identity? Oh, absolutely. There is yes, no is. one in this world quite like Cora. Um, and I think <laughs> anybody who knows me would say the same. Um, I, I have always had a very unique um, personality. I've always had a very accessible and open personality. And I think that that has been um, kind of the greatest things about me is being accessible and being able to touch people. It's actually funny. I was checking my DMs today and I looked at my folder and like Instagram has all of these messages that I've never seen. And so I'm here I am like doing voice recordings, apologizing to my crew boos. Like I didn't see your message. Right. I'm so sorry. Um, because it is, it's important to me to be able to create an identity that makes me accessible, that makes me reachable, and that 
shows the true compassion of my heart because I care. I care a lot about my yeah. boo-boos and a lot of people message me about prayer requests and stuff. So it's very important for me to be intentional about responding to my DMs. That's that's really good that you communicate with everyone that do look up to you or even just admire and feel inspired by you. I think that is so important because you never know what someone is going through at that very moment. And they chose you to be that person to yes. get them out of their thoughts at that moment. Absolutely. It's a it's an honor that is indescribable. I'm very, very honored um, to be able to be that for those who are in need. Yes, that's a blessing. So I know um, you had difficulties of becoming a mother mm -hmm. at a point of time. And I'm really inspired by your story because I myself, I'm 37 years old and I've been having a very hard time getting pregnant myself. And it's been like, stressful yeah I just yeah and I was like to a point like I just wanted to give up like no I don't even care no more no, <laughs> and I felt myself give up, give up. <laughs> I just felt like I was just losing faith but it's like my husband like no we're gonna keep praying we're gonna claim yeah. it and remove that thought <laughs> so absolutely so that's the clear thing Yes. So despite of everything of the doctor saying that you you can't conceive, is your faith still there for yourself? Child, my faith is is <laughs> even higher. Um the the good thing is I have doctors who are believers. And so they um they never said that I couldn't get pregnant. They said that it okay. was not probable for me okay. to get pregnant without help. And I was diagnosed with polycystic ovarian syndrome, which already brings a whole bunch of shenanigans into uh, into the play. But I had to really, really focus on. I, I preach about I preach about faith, and I speak about faith. And I could not say that um, your faith could cure cancer, your faith could cure diabetes, your faith could cure yeah. this, and your faith could cure that. But when it came to infertility. Your faith can't cure that when we have seen like time and time again in the Bible where it took just a word from the Lord, just one word from the Lord and, and women were able to conceive one word from a prophet and women were able to conceive. And so I had to use my faith for fertility. And um, and I understand that I had to get myself into a posture of preparation for my promise. Because I was praying. I was praying for a healthy baby. I was praying for healthy children and just a yes. life of healthiness. And the Lord hit me in the face and was like, yo, stop asking for stuff you are not. And I was like, wait, wh huh? And he was like, you want a healthy baby, but you're not doing the things to be healthy. You're not... You're not creating a right. healthy atmosphere. You're not eating the stuff you're supposed to be eating. You're not taking care of your body. You're not preparing your body for what it is that right. you're praying for. And so don't pray and not prepare. And so I had to That's completely so shift my, my whole life and begin to prepare and start eating the things I was supposed to and start taking prenatal vitamins and working out so that my body could get used to carrying high of, of heavy heartbeats is what yeah. um, my doctor was saying. When you are pregnant, you are carrying two heartbeats. And so if your body is not accustomed to your heart rate being increased and working yeah. out, then your body won't get prepared for the pregnancy that you're looking for. And so I've been on this journey for about a year and, um, and it's been amazing. I've lost a lot of weight and a lot of dry, yeah. dry sizes. And You've I been really getting it too, Hunty. You ain't been. been you have not been playing no games. <laughs> I've seen you walk in you within three weeks. Yep. I, you. I mean, you wasn't playing. No, not at <laughs> you, all. I when the Lord gives me something and He tells me this is what you need to do to get what it is that you're praying for, I go into full gear, and that's what I've been doing. I've just been into full gear. And saying, okay, Lord, instead of me requesting from you to do things for me and in me, let me just move that to the side and say, God, 
help me to be prepared for what it is that I'm praying for and put me in the in the atmosphere of people that are going to support helping me to get there. And that's exactly what yeah. is happening. And so I absolutely believe that I'm going to get pregnant. I absolutely believe that I will conceive and have my children. And it doesn't matter what the doctors say. I know who my ultimate doctor is. And so yes. I'm just excited to be able to go into the doctor's <laughs> office pregnant and be like, ah, look at me pregnant. Bro. Look at me, huh? <laughs> what you say? Okay. <laughs> no, and I, I just really shifted myself. I changed my eating. I changed the times I go to bed. I changed my stress levels. Yeah. Like, I've changed a lot of stuff, and that was just a lot of help from my husband just motivating me. Because some days, I, I ain't going to lie, I just be giving up. We don't I just be like, I can't we do it. We can't, we can't give yes. up. We got to get up. <laughs> I know, but some days I'll be motivated. It just depends, but it's like I'm trying to get myself in consistency for yeah. me to always not feel that way. What but you know, for me a lot is because I walk like almost every day unless I'm doing something that will prevent me from walking. But when I'm uh -huh. walking, I walk for my children to come. I already have their names, and so I walk for Nehemiah, and I walk for Raven. Mm -hmm. and, so, and so it encourages me. Like yesterday as I was walking, I, I just kept declaring, I'm going to walk this sidewalk with my strollers. I'm going to walk this sidewalk pregnant. I'm going to walk this area pregnant. I will walk this pregnant. And I just begin to continue to declare those things over my life. And so it's important for us to walk by that faith that yes. is the only thing that's going to produce what it is that we're fighting for. So walk it out. Walk by faith. Move walk by faith. Out. And, and watch God watch God do something. Even in in your body and in your mind, you'll begin to shift just by allowing God to yes. move you and just walk with you. Yes. <laughs> and you know, I, I'm I, I'm working on that. <laughs> you got it. You I'm got working. it. I'm with you. We fight together. Yes. I'm not going to. Yes, that's true. I'm, I'm not going to fully give up, but it, it's stressful. I it understand. is. You can get your husband it out is. there, too. Y'all walk together. Yeah. We're walking for our babies. We are declaring because everywhere our feet trod is blessed. So sometimes my husband walks with me and we both declare everywhere our feet trod is blessed. So we declare Nehemiah's blessing with this foot trod. We declare Raven's blessing with this foot trod and get together. The Bible says that uh, Elkanah prayed for his wife. And so yes. it's, sometimes it's just our, our uniting together in marriage and saying, you know, we're going to fight this thing together and we're going to win this thing together and watch God, God show up. Yes, that is so true. So so through it all, you are a mother. Yes. And so what what is the joy of feeling that moment? Right oh now? my goodness. Um, <laughs> being a mother is my absolute favorite hat to wear. Um, I was a nanny and a teacher and a teacher's assistant for so long and a nurse like director me. for <laughs> <laughs> for so long before I um, became a mother. And so um, becoming a mother, it just really, it put things in perspective for me, actually, because I always felt like I had to be pregnant and feel the kicks and birth the baby in order to experience the fullness of motherhood. And then the mm -hmm. Holy Spirit just began to speak to me about how there are women who are birthing babies and putting them in microwaves and drowning them and, and putting that's them true. in trash cans. And so mothering for you, that's what the Holy Spirit was saying to me, mothering for you cannot be just about being pregnant. It has to be about what you're willing to build, not what you're willing to birth. And so my children have been that opportunity for me to see the strength and power of mothering beyond birth. And, and the beauty of that. And, and they, it's the same. I, I fought for both of my babies. So I believe 
that that is just kind of something that we end up having to do because our children are going to supersede our anointing. They're going to supersede our success. And, and the enemy yeah. doesn't want that. You're already powerful by yourself. So imagine yes, that's true. the enemy knows like your children are going to supersede the power you're already working with. He does not want anything to do with that. And so no, he's don't. trying to <laughs> stop that. And I've been able to see, like, even with my children that I didn't birth, that the enemy is threatened by their growth because of who is raising them. And so yeah. adoption has been not a, a backup plan. It's not an alternative plan. It is the plan that God placed me in. I tell people all the time I didn't birth my babies, but I delivered them. And and I love them as if I birthed them. I don't know that I would love my children more had I birthed them. No, that, that makes a lot of sense. And it's, it's good that you've done something like that because you've given a child an opportunity to know what it feels like to have a parent that you know, believe in God and giving them a good life and showing them a path that they may not even see mm -hmm. before. So that that's important alone because when people do that, you know, it's a blessing not only to you, but it's a blessing to them also. And it, it just unites everything. Yeah. It just brings so much joy to it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. I found... So much joy, even in the virtual learning. Lord Jesus, help us all, all the mothers, all the mothers of the world. Lord, just help us, God. I know. Uh, it has been, I mean, it's been stressful. Amazing. Child, stressful. Okay. Uh, you, so you hit, did we're you get? Did you get any of those questions yet that you don't understand? Um, I get questions like that every day. Like. <laughs> go, ask your daddy. go ask your daddy. I don't even know. Go ask your daddy. I don't even know it. I don't know. Please go ask him. I'm not aware. Yes, that's how I'll be. I have a learning center full of school agers. Oh. And I'm like, they be like, oh, can so you help me with so this? You are kind of low key mommying it over there. I've been doing it for 20 years. Come through. <laughs> yes. yes. I love that. Yes, yeah, a it learning does. center, and I had a youth program for young girls for eight years. That is so awesome. it, it's been it's a whoo, it's a journey. It is a journey. <laughs> but okay. it just feels so good to see the happiness in a child when you give them love. Yeah. Like love is just so important and some people have the definition of love differently. Yeah. But when it's pure, when it's kind, and when it's just to a point where you feel so protected and shield, it's mm -hmm. like you can feel no other way. And that's the the feeling that I get from the kids that I do be around. It's like they love me even if I tell them they in trouble. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's how it was for me in children's ministry, being the director. And my nanny kids, they, they call me Mimi or Momo. <laughs> and um and I got to I got to nurture and nourish and, and God was even preparing me then and I didn't even know it that I got to be like a, a spiritual mother. Um yeah, before I was even a physical mother, I've been able to spiritually mother. And I tell you, my spiritual if my spiritual womb could catch up and and, and balance out with my physical womb, we would be out. <laughs> Oh, we would be we only talking. I got more spiritual children than the little bit. Okay. Yep. I just need them to be like, dang, Cora. Get them balance out, okay? They're like, dang, Cora, you got all them kids. I've got a lot of spiritual children, child. <laughs> so, Sharon, Sharon would be one of your happiest moments that you've had. As a mother? Um, um as a mother. Or in, even in, in your personal life, just in okay. general. Um, whew. my happiest moment that I have had. I'll give you three. Um, okay. Mary and my husband. I know um, that's right. He is absolutely my best friend, and he makes me laugh and smile every single day for the last 11 years that we have been together, married nine. 
he has made me laugh every day. Um, and we have had hard times and up and downs, but I can like legitimately laugh every day with him. The, the good always the bad. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, the second thing would be cutting the umbilical cord for my son, Jason. Um, so we've had him since birth. It was the first time I ever cut an umbilical cord before. Uh, my um, my first time ever, like, being that <laughs> connected into that moment. And so it was almost like a spiritual severing at that time um, that I got to experience. And that is absolutely one of my favorite moments. And the third thing would be uh, the release of my first book, Faithing It. Um, I never okay. saw myself as an author. I never saw myself writing or anything like that. And so to actually see the cover of my book, like, and hold it in my hands was like, crazy. Uh, like, this is me. This yeah. me. I did this. <laughs> yes, exactly. Those have to be maybe my top three favorite, most memorable moments of my life. That's really good. Especially the last one with your book. Because it's just, you made it so inspiring and uplifting for so many women. And just people just overall. It, you could tell it was your first book. Because, you know, you put a lot of passion into it. And you did it like your first, like your birth, your baby. It is. <laughs> You're like, I'm not about to play. And no games with this book. <laughs> exactly, exactly. It's my first time being able to give people an idea of who I was. And, and I wanted to be very intentional and, again, reachable in doing that. And I know that a lot of times we never get to see people's process. We always get yeah. to see their platform or we get to see their power. We get to see their promises. But no one ever says, hey, I'm going through crap right now. Come along. Man. And so yeah. that gave me the opportunity to be like, yo, so this thing I'm going through, I'm going to bring you on in my room and we're going to talk about it. We're going to get into it. Yes. And I, that's how I've been. That's, how, that's the kind of author that I've been. And so, um, yeah. Really and that's how it be, too. It's like people be thinking everything just goes so smooth. But then once they step into your world and you try to show them, like, look, this. And they don't want no parts of it. They're like, no, nah, I'm cool. Factual, I'm cool. Factual. <laughs> I don't want to do that. And it's it's a struggle. It's so hard. Yeah. And it's just, you got to put so much into what you're doing. Yeah. And then, you know, what you're doing so much. And then somebody got one thing to say. You take it offensive because you're like, I did this. <laughs> right? This, listen, I say, I say, haters, we don't have time for haters. But haters are going to hate. <laughs> They can't congratulate. There's two yep. weeks on their plate. So we suggest they wait. We've checked out our calendar. We don't have dates for hate. Okay? Yes. Keep that, keep that mantra in your life and it'll bless you. It'll bless you. Yep. Ain't nobody trying to hear all that. I'm no. in my lane. You say yours. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so what advice could you give to a woman that feels like they're losing faith and they just need some uplifting? Um, I would say what I say every day when I challenge, don't give up, get up. Get up from the place that tells you that God's power has somehow diminished for you, but is working for everyone else. Get up from the place that says that depression is going to be your powerful place when you know that it is not. Get up from the place of doubt and discouragement and begin to move into what God wants you to do and, and be grateful for the little things that he's doing yes. before you get the big things. I know that faith is hard. I know that having faith in the fight is hard, but they call it the good fight of faith for a reason. And, um, and I would just challenge you to get in that fight. I, as a little girl, one of the first letters that I ever wrote to my um, promises, because I write to Nehemiah and Raven ever so often. And um, okay. I end both of their letters with, I will fight for you until I cannot anymore. And, um, and I believe that there is a power in our ability to push past the depression, to push past the fear to push past the discouragement and the doubt 
and fight for our promise. Jacob yes. fought so hard for a blessing that he popped his hip out of the yes. That is the kind of fight that you, when you're trying to get a blessing from God, Jacob was trying to tell us, it ain't no easy thing to get no blessing from God. Sometimes you're going to no. break in some places. Some things are going to get out of place. But if you're willing to walk with God's blessings, even if you're limping, then God will lead you to the success that you've been praying for. And so don't give up. Get up and believe that the same God that is that you are seeing make miracles happen everywhere else is the same God that can make a miracle happen for you. And a revelation that I gave my little kiddos um, is that your work <laughs> creates an environment for miracles to happen. So make sure that you're doing oh. the work. <laughs> it, it means more to have have the work than it does to have the faith. If you have the faith, but you do not have the work, then you do not have anything. So put the work all. together because the work <laughs> creates the environment for the miracle to happen. Yes, it does. You know what, Cora? You know, this may sound crazy, but I like storms. Yes, like when too. I have <laughs> the best in storms. It's a, it's yes. the best rest that I get is when the storms are raging, child. Yes, seriously. It's like when the storm comes, I'll be excited. Yep. And it took it took me a while to get to that point, but when the storm comes, it gives me confirmation that God is with me, yes. that God is getting ready to do something for me. God is getting ready to remove people out of my life. Yeah. It just gives you confirmation of so many things because you know what's coming. And I had to learn when you sit down and chill for a storm instead of being so dramatic, going all crazy, like your world is going to end. Yeah. When I when I figured out to stop being dramatic, I'm like, oh, this is cool. This I'm is like, I'm about to be. <laughs> yes, because every time when it's over, it's like my life just a go up to a whole nother level yeah. of something that I didn't even imagine and I didn't even pray for. Yeah. So I feel like that's just something that a lot of people overall, they really need to learn that and embrace it Absolutely. with so much passion because God is faithful and he does, he's with us at all times. Absolutely. At the all, storm all also time. is the confirmation of fruitfulness to come. The only yes. way that God shifts the season is in a yep. storm. That's the That's only way the that bomb you know. too. So if you are moving, if, if you can learn to rest in the storm, then God will shift you for fruitfulness in the storm. And and I know that your your podcast isn't, you know, real spiritual Christian prophetic, but I just can't help it to just declare and prophesy over you that as long as you continue to do the work that God is going to answer you with favor, that he's going to answer you with fruitfulness and that even in your discouragement, there is going to be a promise after the storm. That is his inherited victory within our bloodline is that we are going to get victory we're going to have promises and so i just want to declare that over you that that your work will not go in vain that your promise is going to come and that god is faithful to open your womb in this season as you have opened others so shall he open you thank you i really appreciate it i i'm i'm taking that all the way <laughs> Thank you, Chad. Thank you. <laughs> so I really appreciate you being Thank on the podcast. You. It really means a lot to me. You have no idea. It Thank means you. a lot. My pleasure. Yes. So thank you, Cora. Of course. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Bye. -bye. <laughs>